here's the new Maytag A50 washer that I just got from Canton, Georgia this weekend. And I've got it in the kitchen here, and I've got it disassembled a little bit here because the machine did not work. Uh, when I bought this machine on Craigslist, I was told in the item description that the machine worked, but it didn't, um, which doesn't really change much. I still bought it, if nothing else, just to figure out how it works. Um, and so here it is. Um, pretty neat little machine. Um, it's much smaller than the Hoover that's stuck there in the corner over there, um, and probably weighs about four times as much. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen something that's so small and weighs so much. A um, couple of things it needs. Um, the wash impeller in this machine is kind of odd, as this machine has two of them, which I've never seen before. And I'm not sure how that's going to work yet, because if we go around to the back here, the bolt, as you can see, goes from this little motor up to these pulleys, is missing. So I don't know how that works yet. Um, I was able to find a belt at the local Maytag store here. Hold on one second. For the machine, and it was $26. And in my hand, which looks like fat spaghetti, let me zoom in on that a little bit, that's the remaining belt that was in the machine when I bought it. Now, according to the guy that works at the parts counter at the Maytag store downtown, he says that this belt is made of urethane of some kind, and it's actually supposed to be clear and I'll pick up another piece here. It's supposed to be clear and very flexible. Now you can see I'll take this little piece here for example. I mean, it's just, there's no flexibility to any of this. That's why there's so many pieces. But luckily, they were able to find another one. And so I'll, I'll have a uh, working, uh, at least a pulsator setup that works uh, in the machine. Now, I was able to get the machine to work as far as the spin side. The pump works, the spin basket, which I'll show you here. I don't have the machine plugged up right now, so I can't uh, show you. But I cleaned the spin can out, which actually looks pretty good. Um, now, the motor and the pump and the assembly for that work just fine. Everything works. Now, this machine is a little weird because when you close the lid, you slide this little plastic lever in, and it moves an arm in the back that actually engages a tensioner pulley in that belt. Uh, it's kind of weird. It turns the motor on and and also connects that together. But the biggest problem with the machine is the pump. Well, I said the pump, which is right here. The pump seems to be fine. Everything over here seems to be fine. But you'll notice there's something missing here. And that is the, let me pull this out here, all the little pieces. machine is actually fine. Now, when I got this machine, before I took it apart, I did decide to check and make sure that it didn't leak or anything. So I went on and put a little bit of water in it and, you know, started the spin can and drain pump up. And everything worked fine, but I noticed that when you put water on either side, it bleeds over to the other side. And I wasn't really sure why it was that up here, which controls which side um, of the machine is going to be fed through the pump. Um, what it does is it is nothing more than a little cable hookup. It's got this little metal tether wire with a hook. You can see the little hook right there at the end of it. And what that does is it hooks into this whole assembly here, which I've got out of the machine. I didn't really think to record this before I took it apart, so I'll try to explain this the best I can. Um, when I get it back together, I'll also take some pictures, maybe another video clip. But this little plate here 
screws into the front of that, and this little rotor wheel here sits in there. Uh, it's connected with this little pin that goes through here, and that little cord goes through there and hooks into this. And all it does is it pulls, that's what goes inside this, this is a diverter valve. And this is fine, this is the problem. What's happening is when you move that little lever, it pulls this to and from, and this is just in there. But what happened, as you'll see here, is there's supposed to be a little shaft there, and it's completely eroded away. And connected to that shaft is this little round piece. And this little round piece connects there, and it, what it does is <clears throat> this output right here, this top one, is the one that goes to the pump. And these are the water inlets. And what it is, this little round, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, baffle, I guess. When you move that little thing, it does this. It goes this way or this way and plugs either this one or this one. So it only lets one of these pass through at a time. And that is determined on whatever you set the drain dial to. So what's happened, the reason that it was not working, is that this little bugger here broke. And you can, I don't, know, I don't know how well you all can see this, but this is just crumbling. I mean, there's, it's completely come apart. It's just ruined. I'll have to find another piece. Um, but I like the fact that this diverter valve is not a sealed piece, uh, like on some machines. I mean, I can just pop this little insert out, get a new one, and it's fixed. I don't have to replace this whole assembly. Um, a lot of things about this machine, especially, let me zoom in on the bottom here. This is where that diverter housing went. This machine is very easy. So everything I found on the machine so far is very easy to work on. I like that. Um, I'm going to see how much these cost and see if I can still get one somewhere. Um, and then that will fix that. With a belt in this, uh, she should be good to go. Um, my belt will be here Tuesday, but I don't think the belt's going to do me much good if I have to fill up both the wash and spin tubs both just to wash clothes. Um, so I'm going to have to wait for this. But uh, in the meantime, I thought I would make a little film. I had taken some pictures and put them up on my federal bucket uh, site, but probably not going to mean very much about an explanation. They probably just look like a bunch of random parts. But it's actually a really neat system how it works. It's very simple and I don't know, it's kind of neat. This whole machine's kind of neat. It's, it's, I'm going to get a, see if I can get a shot of this, but if you look in the machine here, this big thing right here in the back is the wash impeller motor. This machine has to weigh at least 150 pounds. It took two of us to move this little tiny machine, which is smaller than the Hooper, up the stairs into the apartment. Um, it's got two motors. It's got this, which, something neat for the A50, um, it's a reversing motor. Those two uh, impellers that are on the side of the wash tub, they will rotate for a certain amount of time in one direction, and then they'll turn around and go for a certain amount of time in the other direction. Um, and they do that. That's how the cycle works. They go for, I haven't timed how many seconds it runs in each direction, but it, it's a forward and reverse motor like, like a lot of modern machines use. And, of course, the motor for the spin spin basket is a separate piece, a separate unit. Um, it's, and, it, and it works pretty well. Um, it was a little cranky when I first started, but I don't know how long it's been since this washer has been powered up, but I'm assuming it's been a while. The, um, the V-belt that drives the, the uh, spin tub and the pump had a, had a couple flat spots in it where it had been in the same shape for so long, but it seems to have smoothed out mostly. If anybody has any information on the A50s, um, please feel free to comment on this video or email me, because um, I would love to know more about them. Now, on this panel over here, I like the fact that it has a removable front panel and rear panel as well, but this front panel here, let me get in on that, it's, they actually print the schematics for everything. The electrical system is printed on the inside of that, which is nice. Now, one thing I don't understand about these machines um, and if anybody who has a quarter washer in one of these A50s, um, feel free to comment on this video and let me know. But 
What I don't understand is that the spin can here, if it's designed to do rinse, rinse uh, spins, or if it's one of those machines that wants you to do the same thing like, like the dandies do, they want you to refill the second tub, or the first tub, and do a rinse that way. But um, either way, if anybody has any documentation or information that they do on the share on this machine, I'd greatly appreciate it. And thanks for watching.